Hi, and welcome to the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Jeff Foley, and I'm joined by District 2 Commissioner Rick Wilson and Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Hey, it's, it's good great to be, to be here. here. Good how, to be here today. How are we doing today? Very doing good. good. Doing good. So we're going to talk a little <laughs> bit about what's going on in the county. What are the biggest concerns that you see in Polk County right now, crime-wise? Well, do you know, first and foremost, I want to point out that crime's at a 51-year low. This is a very, very safe community. In fact, our crime rate in Polk County is half of what the statewide crime rate is, and the statewide crime rate is lower than almost every other state in the union. So not only is Florida state safe, then you're gonna be twice as safe in Polk County. But currently, the issue that we're concerned with, and we're working with all our colleagues from the police departments, are these gangsters that are shooting each other because not only are they shooting up each other and their houses, they're occasionally shooting up the wrong places. So I'm concerned with that. So while our crime rate's down, our murder rate's down from last year, our violent crime rate's down from last year, what we're seeing is our little gangbangers wanting to shoot it out with each other and that's going to stop because we're gonna keep locking them up until it stops. They're not gonna negatively affect this community will guarantee that. 51 year low, what, what do we attribute that to? You know, I'll, I'll jump back, you know, five years ago when I was running for, uh, you know, county commissioner and um, my number one priority was, you know, safety, safety, fire and rescue. And the, the thing about it is I work very closely with, with Grady, with Sheriff Judd. And, you know, you have to have the assets and you have to have the people and the things to be able to do that. And, you know, this commission, and I've worked hard on it, giving Grady what he needs because we want to feel safe. You know, we want to have our people to be able in this county to be able to come and go as they do. As he just mentioned, yes, we have things that happen, but I promise you this, this man's on top of it and that's what we want. And that's why we want to make sure he has what he wants. And, you know, we make sure that he has the money that he needs to have. And is there a regular flow of communication between the sheriff and the commissioners? Oh, daily. We, we talk all the time, and it depends on the issue. If a commissioner receives a concern from someone in the county, that's not only the commissioner's concern, that's mine too. So that's, that's a priority. So if someone calls the commissioner and talks about speeding or traffic, just like if they call my office and talk about speeding and traffic, we make that an immediate priority. And I can tell you that it's like being a great surgeon. You can be the greatest surgeon in the world, but if you don't have the infrastructure, you don't have the operating room, you don't have the tools, you don't have the people, you can't do your job. The reason we're safe in this county is because of our Board of County Commissioners. They give us what we need in order to keep the people safe. And if you're not safe and you don't feel safe, the community can't thrive. You know what I hear every time I go give a public speech? We moved to Florida because of Governor DeSantis. We moved to Polk County because of Sheriff Grady Judd. Well, the reality of it is the Board of County Commissioners do not get the credit they deserve because I couldn't do my job if it weren't for the Board of County Commissioners and all the wonderful men and women that stand in the gap between good and evil or support us that way. And so our offices work together nonstop all week long, and we work together as well. We have a pretty good understanding. You know, I, he's got our back in this county, and us county commissioner has his back. And, and that's how it works. You know, it's just, there's things that's come up over the years that we didn't have to worry about it because we knew that he had the people and he got the job done. So, I mean, that's one thing that we don't have to worry about. I've heard of counties that the sheriffs wouldn't, wasn't doing a great job and doing things, and, the, and the, the board has to get involved in that, try to make changes. You know, we got enough things to worry about, you know, and we surely don't want that, and that's what's great about having Sheriff Judd. It's, it's amazing. I think, Sheriff, you mentioned the gangsters in the area shooting each other up. Is that, is that an issue that's been going on for a while? Is that something that's relatively new? Well, it, it's just started in the last couple of years. In 17, 18, and 19, we had two, four, and six. Then 20, 21, and 22, the numbers have jumped up. We've arrested a lot of people. 
In fact, I've got to tell you that we were able to do a wiretap on one of the most infamous national gangs. And we arrested and brought criminal charges against all the hierarchy of this gang throughout the state of Florida and even got the president of the gang out of South Carolina. In fact, he's still running from us. We'll catch him. He's going to jail too. But it's expensive to do wiretaps. And we couldn't do that without the Board of County Commissioners. But see, we work together. And if I need something, not want something, but need something to keep the community safe, I present it to the Board of County Commissioners. I talk to the commissioners because look, I operate as sheriff like I would want to be treated if I was a commissioner. So if my, if my sheriff came to me and said, hey, I need this much money, I would say, great, we can make that happen. Explain to me what it is and why we need it. Well, I don't bring the commissioners a problem without bringing a solution or two or three solutions. And quite frankly, the first thing I hear is, how's it going to keep the community safe? So it is such a wonderful work environment. And as the commissioner said, I was the president of the Florida Sheriff's Association, and then I was the president of the Major County Sheriff's Association of America. So I've interacted with sheriffs and commissioners all over this state and nation. Other communities could only dream of having the relationship that we have with our Board of County Commissioners. And I know, so I know our commissioners work to keep people safe. They work hand in hand with you. I would say that another, another topic that the commission has a strong interest in is mental health. What role does mental health play, would you say, in the problems we're having in society with crime? We do everything that we can as a commission to help that situation, but I mean, he deals with it every day and he has a lot of things in place and I'll let him say, tell you that, but it, it is a very big you know, problem or yeah, you can call it a problem, but we do everything in our power to help the sheriff and all the other mental health divisions in this county to, to do the right thing and to help. 42% of the people in the county jail today are on psychotropic medications. Mm -hmm. Some of them are significantly <laughs> mentally ill. Others have significant drug addictions and they kind of go hand in hand. So what we do when, when people come into the county jail is if they're significantly mentally ill, we put them in a mental health ward. So we make it as much like a hospital setting as is possible at a jail. And not only do we provide medications for them, in addition to that, we also provide mental health counseling. And the goal is to, to stabilize them and then when they move back into the community, be able to provide resources. It's called the Helping Hands Program. So why is that possible? Once again, the commission. The commission makes that possible. We're very sensitive to the need to help those that have mental health issues. I was just able to appoint a director of mental health services to coordinate between us, the county, all the hospitals, and all the providers, as well as the police departments. Because what I learned from being on the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission, in, in her, uh, and we are doing an investigation on that horrible shooting in Broward County, is there's a lot of mental health services available, and they're in silos, and no one talks to anyone. So as a result, once again, of the commission being gracious and, and funding, we're able to better coordinate our response, and we're going to see more responses for the community in the next few years than they, and at a greater pace than they've ever seen before. Because we recognize that in order to be physically healthy, you also have to be mentally healthy. That sounds like an incredibly compassionate approach to law enforcement, maybe one that you don't hear about regularly. Um, have you seen the mental health issues change since the onset of COVID? I've seen the mental health issues change since I got into law enforcement. I've been involved in law enforcement my entire adult life. When I first began as a young deputy, we had mental health hospitals that the state paid for. So when we brought people in on Baker Acts, if they needed significant help and they weren't able to get it any other way, 
then the judge or the court could order them into a mental health hospital. Well, for more reasons than we've got time to explain here today, and it started out with people going, oh, they're not getting the treatment they need and wanting to sue, and we've got medicine, and why are you locking them up? Well, the state closed down the hospitals. Things didn't get better because guess what? The county jail that they fund ended up with the people that should have been in mental health hospitals. We also found these folks sleeping in orange groves and underneath overpasses. So what we saw from the time I got into law enforcement to the last few years is a system of mental health in degradation. But we've started turning that around again. We still need mental health hospitals at a state level. But in the meantime, what our Board of County Commissioners said and, and, and uh, Commissioner Wilson is, we can't wait on the state and federal government. Let's do what we can today. And that's what we're doing. So I think I mentioned off air, I'm a transplant from New York and I've had a few opportunities to see uh, deputies in action. And I, speaking of compassion, I've seen compassion out of them. I've seen them get down on the ground in a 95 degree day and change tires for people. I've seen them handle people more gently than maybe they would have in other parts of the country. I guess I'm curious what you look for and what makes a good deputy. Sure. We look for deputies who want to treat people the way that they want their mother treated. And here's what I say. We had orientation today and I talked to some new deputies we hired. I expect you to be honest, ethical, and moral all of the time. I expect you to deliver customer service with a sense of urgency. I expect you to talk to people and treat people like you'd want your mother treated. So if your mother was a victim of a robbery or a burglary, how would you want that to go? If someone stopped your mother today on the side of the road for speeding, how would you want them to talk to your mother? And how would you want to be treated if you were in the place of the people you're dealing with? And then I explained to my deputies, it's really simple. It's called customer service with a sense of urgency. And it's a business decision. If you don't decide to do it that way, then you can't work with us. But I've got to brag on our deputies and our support staff. They are simply the very best. But once again, I couldn't hire them. I couldn't pay the wages. I couldn't create the benefits. I couldn't have the health insurance. If it weren't for the Board of County Commissioners, they are the funding source. And they make sure that we stay competitive with pay and benefits so that we can have the very best deputies, which we do. And Commissioner Wilson, I appreciate your support. Well, you know, th that is one of the key things. You know, it's always the people, the deputies, or even in our, uh, you know, here at the BOCC, we have gr got great staff here. We've got great people that work here. And, and that's how you make something work right. And, and that's what we try to strive to do and uh, to have good people that, that want to go to work and work hard to get the job you know, done the right way. And it, it filters down. So you know, it's, it, and it's always a demanding job because the explosions that we're having in this county, you know, it, it affects him. It affects all of us you know, with the growth that we're having. And so it's just having good people to do the right job. Is it hard to find those good people? Mm. This is a very competitive market right now. It is difficult to find good people it's in any industry, whether it's trucking, teaching, nursing, doctors. It is, it is very challenging because as I read a report, and, and Commissioner and I were talking about this last week, I read a report 20 years ago that talked about how much bigger the baby boomer work generation was than the next generation and right now, the baby boomers are retiring and the next generation of workers aren't sufficient for all of the jobs, which means it's more competitive. And if you don't pay, right. then you're not going to hire the people. And it's not like there's another level of people to hire to train up. They're not there. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just left, left a constitutional luncheon today. And Commissioner, our our conversation was the same as it was last week at, a, at our planning retreat, that we have to take care of the wonderful people that work with us. If we don't, somebody else will, right. because there's just not enough people in this workforce any place. Now, you start giving them polygraphs and psychologicals, 
and it makes it even more difficult to hire great right. people. So the pool that you're drawing from gets cut down by the type of person you need, obviously. And, and the environment we're in today. So, so it's a shrinking pool of labor while the need for labor is increasing. So I know you do events like Jeeping with Judd. T tell me a little bit about what's the motivation behind that type of thing. To help the community. Our deputies volunteer their time to put on this wonderful event to raise money for Polk Sheriff Charities. Then we go out into the communities where people are less fortunate, where children want to have Christmas presents. If our deputies go into a community tonight on a disturbance call and we see there's no milk in the refrigerator or no food in the pantry, and yes, that really happens, then we go out tonight and we buy food and milk. All of that comes out of Polk Sheriff Charities and there's a philanthropist that helps fund that. Commissioner Wilson knows her very well. She keeps a steady amount of money in there and she tells me, Grady, make sure your deputies don't let anyone go hungry. Anytime you go to a call and you see there's a need, help them, and we do. That's the great community we have here. But it's all of us working together. We, the commission couldn't do what they do. I couldn't do what I do without this wonderful community. That, right. And it's so one, it is so awesome to be here where the people care about those that are less fortunate. So Sheriff Commissioner, what is next on the agenda with, with regard to law enforcement? What, what are you looking at accomplishing down the road? What are the goals? My main goal is just continue to do what we can for you know, our sheriff so he can take care of the people of this county. And you know, whatever it takes, we talk all the time about, you know, as I mentioned a while ago, one of our biggest thing is growth now. And of course, when you have more growth, you have more people, it takes more deputies, it takes, it, it takes everything to work. So of course, that costs money. So we have to plan for that. And, you know, it's, it's great because one of the reasons people come here, he touched on it a while ago, we are a very safe place to live. But then when you back up and look at all these people coming, you got to get ahead of it and you got to make sure that you can supply that same service to those people that got here today. And, and that's always a challenge. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. In fact, over the last three years, there's been about 80,000 mm -hmm. new people move into the county. And some would say, well, some of them moved into the city. Yes, they did. But see, the city services is a layer on top of the county services. And for example, the county jail. If you look in Florida law, the responsibility to run the county jail is with the Board of County Commissioners, not the sheriff. In this county, the Board of County Commissioners, many, many, many decades ago, came to the sheriff and said, would you run the jail for us? We run the jail for the Board of County Commissioners. Was the population increases, unfortunately, we get a few bad actors. Fortunately, the overwhelming majority of the people that move here are wonderful, good people for which we're grateful that they're here. But there's, there's more stress on the jail. There's more stress on the roads. There's more stress on the ambulances and the fire trucks. And Commissioner Wilson called over uh, not so long ago and said, Grady, you talked about that next district command you need. It's time to build it. And I'll go, Commissioner, we, we're planning it. And he said, now's the time. He said, and so we are going to build a sixth district. It's gonna be called the Ridge District at Poinciana. And it's, it's under the design phase and we will be in that building probably within about two years. And along with that comes deputies. So we're staffing 125 new deputies over the next five years. That's 25 additional deputies a year. All of that is just to handle growth. That's not going to elevate us above the service level, but it's going to keep us at the service level. Just like Commissioner uh, Wilson said, if it, we've, we've got to add the resources and the infrastructure because as more people move here, we don't want our safety to diminish. We don't want our services to diminish. They've got to stay the same, and it cost. I think that's a great example of the commission and the sheriff's office working together for the community. Ironically, that was my first day on the job, the groundbreaking yeah, for that station. 
And I think it's great that there will be additional law enforcement there, but I remember you talking also about how that will be a resource for the community to come and have events at the substation, et cetera. And I, I, again, I think that's just a, a great thing to make people aware of, that it is more than just catching the bad guys. You guys do a whole lot more than that. Well, Commissioner Wilson, Commissioner Santiago, the entire board, we're not only having a workstation there, but we're having a community room. Mm -hmm. We want the community to come be with us, to be part of us, to have a room there where that they can have neighborhood meetings, they can have weddings, they can have they can have any kind of meeting that's significant for the for them. So that's what government does. We are the people, and the people they re, they are the government. So so it's not the community and us. It's all of us together because. What are we? What's the commissioner and I? We're residents of Polk County. We're citizens of Polk County. And it's back to, as I said before, how do I want to be treated as a citizen of Polk County? That's how we need to treat every citizen in Polk County. And you've got to stay on top of it. I mean, as the growth that we're having, you know, we're the fastest growing county in the state, fifth or sixth in the nation, somewhere in that. But especially in what we're talking about in that corner, northeast corner, it's exploded. And you know you got to be able to, you know, give the service to the people there that are in that area because it's not going to slow down. It, it's it's continued growth. I remember, I mean, I'm in the cattle business and we had a ranch up there 30 years ago and, and we ran cattle right there in Ponciana and hunted. And in that shorter time, it has exploded like it has. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you got to be ahead of the game. You got to be looking at what's going on because we're always trying to get caught catch up. And but and just I don't know if you'll ever get ahead of it. You know, I'm gonna say you won't ever get ahead of it. So we're always playing catch up, but we got to think way out so we can not be behind as far as we could be, and that's the way I look at it. So I think you guys should be ready to get a lot of invitations to parties and weddings that happen in those community centers. <laughs> Probably so I want to want to clear your calendars for that. Well, I just want to thank you know the sheriff for being here and spending his time. He's a busy guy just like we all are, and. Uh, and letting you know, talking about what you know, how we try to work together to make this county a better place. That's what it's all about. Both me and him were born and raised in this county. This is our home, and and you know, and I love my home, and he loves his home, and we want to try to make it as best as we can. So our grandchildren will be be happy for this, and and our families will have a good place to to live and and, and do things. And that's the main thing. It's just it's a big job, but you know, we work hard at it, and I want to thank him for that. Well. We are safe in this community, and people thrive here, and the kids thrive here, and the businesses thrive here, and people want to come here because it's safe. Why do you think people are fleeing the Californias and the New Yorks and the Detroits and the Chicagos and the DCs? I talked to a person at a community meeting. He was a young person. He said, you know, I worked in one of the big cities up north, made a lot more money. My wife made a lot more money. But my kids now are five, six, and seven. And he said, they're stepping stones. And when they're not safe to play in the front yard, it's time to go someplace else. My kids are thriving here. They can play in the front yard. We don't have to worry about crime. Well, the reason is who you put in all public office, who you elect. Do they care more about the criminal or do they care more about the community? In this state and in this county, we care about the wonderful community. And if you're a criminal, we're going to lock you up. Now, we're going to show you a better way and give you an opportunity to be a participating and a safe citizen in the community. And that's your choice whether you do or you don't. We'll give you second opportunities, third opportunities, fourth opportunities. But we're not putting up with the nonsense here because this is all about being safe and feeling safe. And people do feel safe because of our commission, because of our state legislature, because of our sheriffs and police chiefs. Well, as a dad, I appreciate what you both do to help keep our community safe. So thank you. Thank you. That's it for this episode of the Commissioner's Report. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and like our social media.